Chen Wardle. I'm a member of the British School at Athens, here in Athens, and I teach at the University of Birmingham in England. And I've come here with my wife Diana. We're both archaeologists and we've come to study some of the gold vessels from the shaft graves at Mycenae and from other Mycenaean sites. Uh, the aim of our study is to make, for the first time, uh, accurate drawings of some of these vessels and in the process of drawing them, which is Diana's particular skill, to try and understand some of the ways in which they were made and to understand the skills of the craftsmen who made them three and a half thousand years ago. I'm also a student at the British School in Athens and I am a honorary fellow at the University of Birmingham. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much to the National Museum and everybody here who has been, have been totally fantastic and helpful. The privilege of being able to see these is unbelievable. Um, I first got interested in these many years ago uh, in a way that many uh, Mycenaean archaeologists do, through Alan Wace. Alan Wace saw everything, did everything, but there were a few little things that we, he left for us to do. On his mantelpiece was a cup, a silver cup, of this shape. This is the uh, dog-headed goblet from the Acropolis treasure, of which there are four the lucky person who had them. His is silver and hallmarked in England from at Birmingham. And it's a very strange thing. Why did he have a copy of this hallmarked in Birmingham, made in Birmingham? We know there were others made in Greece. The firm of Gilleron made many replicas and together with Schliemann supplied all the European and American museums with copies from what was called galvanoplastic from Baden-Württemberg, what we would probably call an electrotype now. They and Chirons copies, and these are not quite the same as the ones in Birmingham, so we were curious to see where they'd come from, who, where, where he had got his information. It doesn't seem to be from any of the published books. It isn't, he hasn't come here and seen these. The, the firm, I'm sorry, I'm talking about is called Nathan and Hayes, and they used to be in Icknield Street in Birmingham. They made superb copies, some less good. I, they obviously never seen this, the Vafio Cup. Um, the one like this is wonderful. Uh, and others, the only thing they did do was because it was fashionable at the time to make these replicas for schools, for young men who had finished doing classics at Oxford or Cambridge, as a gift. And they also used them in a more uh, interesting fashion, for example, this one with the bulls. They made into a trophy for uh, the largest bull, the winners of this. Uh, some of these were races, they made those of races. They also made a smaller one of the dog cup with a pair of crossed golf clubs on it again, as a trophy. And in consequence, trophies were obviously very fashionable. They took this one and this one and they shrank them slightly. So they adjusted them for their own commercial use. I still do not know where they got their copies from. I'm drawing these in the hope that some detail will show me where they got them, where they, if a, a detail is missing, but it's there in the Gilleron one, and various other methods of, of searching. I just hope that uh, one day we will find out. And best known cups is Nestor's cup. This cup here, which every schoolboy or schoolgirl who studies classics will recognize with the birds on the top, and very similar to the description in Homer. Now, I have one made by Nathan and Hayes. It's a very good reproduction. He didn't know that the stem was hollow, which is quite an interest. So is the foot also hollow. He didn't know that. Gilleron made copies. He, too, did, decided, I think, 
to fill in the hole to make it better to drink out of. And I have a very special silver cup which has on the inside, made by, it's made by Giron, on the inside it says Infimion Elavos, Olga, 1903. Oh. Now there's only one Olga in 1903 who would be giving silver cups. Sadly we don't know who she gave it to, but it was the Queen of Greece. And very recently I just discovered another gold, but a 24 carat gold cup. This time, this one. And both these cups were made by the firm of Chilon. The 24 carat one like this was given to the a senior person in Lower Saxony in Germany as a gift from Frederiki and King Paul. So they were so proud, as they should be, of these wonderful finds that some very lucky people got some wonderful gifts. One of the wonderful things about any archaeological research, you start with a few interesting questions and as you find the answers, you start to ask more questions and learn about things that you didn't imagine that you would be able to learn about in the research. And here in our visit to the National Museum, uh, we met with a goldsmith, Akis Gumas, who showed us some of the techniques used for the manufacture of these wonderful gold vessels, indicating the skills and the craftsmanship of probably young men or women who lived three and a half thousand years ago. We've much enjoyed our stay and we look forward to coming back again.